Hello friends, this video on solid states part 7 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Next is the ionic solids. So as the name suggests ionic solids, ions are the constituent particles here. Good example which we can think of is this NaCl. Na plus NCl minus ions. Correct? So here if you see, this is my Na plus Cl minus. Green, green is all my Cl minus. And this, they are strong, they are, they are, these are solids composed of positively charged ions and negatively charged ions. Na plus Cl minus. Since they are charged ions, they are hold by a strong Coulombic force, electrostatic force of attraction, right? That, that strong is, that force of attraction is all the more strong because not partial charge, not we have the real charge, correct? Since the attraction between them is strong, because the real charge, they are hard and brittle, correct? Why? Because the force of attraction between them is very, very strong. Since the force of attraction between them is very strong, they also have high melting point and boiling point. But they are insulators. Because why? Because they don't have any free electrons to move, to pass, to connect electricity. But in the molten state, in the molten state or in the dissolved state, when you melt it or by heating it or when you dissolve in water or something then what you get they are free ions for example this is my Cl minus ions you get free ions so these free ions can connect electricity so sodium chloride as such is in the solid state is not connector of electricity but in water if you put sodium chloride which common salt it will conduct electricity the another example can be NH4, NO3, NH4 plus NO3. Correct. So these ionic solids, very strong force of attraction because they have the real charge here. Since the force of attraction is very strong, logically it makes sense this will be hard and brittle. Also it will have high melting and boiling point. But since there was no free electrons, they are insulators in solid form. But the moment you dissolve in water or when you uh, put in the molten state, it will conduct electricity because it will have free ions. The next is the metallic solids, pretty interesting. So in metallic solids, if you see the metal, they are nothing but they are ordered collection of positive ions. There are so many positive ions, they are all metallic ions actually, right? and they are surrounded by free sea of electron they are all electrons the blue ones you see they are electrons free electrons since there are so many free electrons these free electrons i'll explain you they are responsible for electrical conductivity and they are also responsible for thermal conductivity in fact they are responsible for its malleability ductility shine everything so let's see how it works See, for the electrical conductivity, if you apply electric field here, from let's suppose you put a positive charge, negative charge here and a positive charge here, some battery you connect. Like that. Now what happens is, the electrons will flow from here, the electric field created. The electrons will flow through this network of positive ions. And there is free electrons also to take part. When you heat, when the heat is applied on one side, thermal energy is uniformly spread by these free electrons. These free electrons help in spreading the thermal energy. So these electrons are responsible for both electrical and thermal connect. Right? Let's talk about. So let me write the thing we discussed is thermal and electrical conductivity. Let's talk about the shine, the luster, color, the shine. So this is also because of free electron. How? See, when the light falls on the electrons, since there are free electrons, 
this uh, atoms in the electrons the shells they jump to the higher orbital and when they come back it uh, glows it radiates back the light the bohr's things which we have discussed if you want to know more details you can watch the atom chapter where we discuss about this so we have this atoms the light falls on this right this uh, uh, in this we have this uh, here we have electrons right this electrons will jump correct to higher orbitals and then it will come back to a lower orbital and it will emit light same thing these electrons are there it will jump back to go to higher orbitals when you uh, when it absorbs light it comes back to its normal uh, orbital and it emits light and that's why it has luster and colors correct now let's talk about the malleability and ductility malleability malleable and ductile it is malleable and ductile right Malleable, you can melt it. Ductile, you can make a small thin of wire also of this. Why? These three electrons allow metals to slide over each other, and that's why they are malleable and ductile. For example, copper, aluminium, all these metals have free electrons. Correct. So this there's a force between positive and negative, positive and negative, and these force hold this metal ion together. Now, since again we are talking about the real charge here, positive and negative, the force of attraction is more. Since the force of attraction is more, this metallic bond, the attraction is more. They are rigid. It's a rigid structure. Since the structure is rigid, they have high, high MPN BP. That is high melting and boiling point. Correct. These are the properties of the metallic solids. They have, they are thermally and electrically conductor. They have lustres and colors, malleable ductiles. They have rigid structures. They have high melting and volume. All these things are happening because of the electrons. Correct. So hope you understood what is metallic structure, metallic solids. For example, if you see this uh, gold, iron, copper, they have lustres. They have high melting and boiling point. They are also conductor. Let's talk about the last crystalline solids that is called covalent solid. Right? They are covalent solid. There is a mistake here. This ionic solid is not part of molecular solid, it is part of crystalline solid. Right? Similarly, uh, this is also not part of uh, metallic solid is also not category of uh, crystalline so these are all uh, directly part of crystalline solid they are not part of molecular solid molecular solid will have three parts we discussed that polar non-polar that so let's start with the covalent solids also called network solids because the strong network it forms looking at the shape you can see the network say right? the strong network so here the constituent particles are atoms. Here we have atoms, carbon atoms. Here you see, in case of diamond, graphite also we have all these blue dots are carbon atoms. So the constituent particle is atom. And they are connected by, connected by covalent bond. I hope you understand what is covalent bond and ionic bond. If you don't understand, please watch my previous videos where we explained this. So a network of covalent bond is formed throughout the crystal. Throughout the crystal, we have a network of covalent bond, right? And this is a giant structure, it forms a giant structure, correct? It forms, let me write here giant structure since they form a giant structure it's also called a giant molecule it has been given the name of giant molecule because it has it forms a giant structure correct so these are generally crystalline solids of non-metals because it forms a covalent bond so generally it is non-metal and they are also very very strong 
and if you see they are all pretty much arranged strong and directional you can say example silicon sorry uh, diamond silicon carbide graphite there's so many examples of this they very hard and brittle why because see the force of attraction is more and plus they have such a giant network so they are very hard and brittle they are insulators exception graphite is the exception they are generally hard but again graphite is the exception we have discussed the structure of graphite because these layers right they can slip over each other so it forms layers this layer is one this is one strong layer the one strong layer they can slip over each other that's why they are the graphite is soft and uh, it conduct electricity but that is an exception but in general case they are very hard and brittle and they are insulators so we talk about the graphite structure it has a typical structure this carbon atoms are arranged in different layers as i told and each atom is bonded to three of its neighboring atom if you see this guy 1 2 and 3 correct and the fourth one if you see is present within the layers and they are free to move they are free to move actually and that's why they connect electricity and they are uh, soft also because these layers slide over each other and they are soft it's a very good lubricant solid lubricant at high temperatures i told and the normal lubricants which we use in uh, our vehicles they burn at high temperature but sometimes in high machinery where uh, the the whole thing takes place at very the whole uh, mechanism takes place at very very high temperature the normal lubricant may not work it will burn so in that case graphite is used as lubricant there thank you visit examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online tests get pre study materials find tutors and mentors and much more thanks once again